Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we're going to go over an example set of solutions for the autoencoders exercise. Let's get started. Okay, here we are at the autoencoder exercise notebook. We went ahead and ran the imports here, and then we'll read in the data by running that cell. Let's go ahead and display the data frame. You can just say df to show that. And here we can see the various food categories as well as the four countries. Next task was to transpose the data frame. So if you just Google search uh, data frame transpose plus pandas, or if you look around the documentation, you'll realize there's a transpose method. And we previously discussed this when talking about describe. So if you run that, that will basically kind of rotate or transpose the data frame. So now I have these four countries as my rows. So I have this nice little heat map. However, it's pretty hard to actually distinguish the different countries from each other. So let's go ahead and complete this task in order to actually plot out this heat map. And we can do this a variety of ways, but essentially we're just going to call sns.heatmap and you can either call it on the original data frame or the transposed data frame. If you just run SNS heat map, you'll get kind of a smaller figure. So you can always enlarge it by saying plt figure fig size is equal to, and then say something a little larger. You can say something like five by four, or 10 by eight, etc. Actually, I think 10 by eight will make it larger here. Let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. So you can either run it this way, or as discussed, you can run the transposed way. So say df transpose and see it as such. But either way, it's a little hard to distinguish the differences between these four countries just through a heat map. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and run the imports necessary to build out our autoencoder. So let's first say import TensorFlow, or we'll say from tensorflow.keras.models, import a sequential model, and then from tensorflow.keras.layers, import dense. And if you want to use the stochastic gradient descent optimization, you can import that as well. We'll go ahead and just use Atom as our optimizer. So let's go ahead and and we'll go ahead and use stochastic gradient descent as our optimizer. And to use that, we'll simply say from tensorflow.carius, caris.optimizers, import SGD, go ahead and run that. And so now we have our imports, let's go ahead and create the encoder. Lots of different ways you could have done this, but here I'll just say encoder is equal to an instance of sequential. And we'll follow what the task said, which is a dense layer, starting with eight neurons as our unit then the activation function of rectified linear unit. And then we have to just specify here the input shape is equal to starting at 17. So we go from 17 straight to eight. And then next here for the next layer, we'll go from that eight. So add another dense layer down from that eight to the four activation function equal to rectified linear unit. And it's up to you. If you want, you can continue specifying the input shape from before. But if you just stack these right on top of each other, you don't necessarily have to. So optionally, you can keep specifying input shape like this from the previous layer, just to make sure you keep your layers in order, kind of in your own mind. But really, it's not necessary because we're adding it in order right after the previous layer. So we'll say encoder, and then finally add in dense. Let's go ahead and bring it down to two units and an activation function of rectified linear unit. Okay. So there's our encoder. Next, we're going to create the decoder. Essentially, operates the exact opposite. So we'll say a decoder is equal to the sequential model. And then we'll add in those dense layers. So we'll say dense units here. It's going to go starting at four with the activation function for a rectified linear unit, taking in our input shape as two. So recall that this two right here is the final layer of the encoder, and it's kind of the middle hidden layer throughout the entire auto encoder. And then we'll add in basically in reverse what the encoder is. So then units here is going to be equal to eight. Activation is equal to rectified linear unit. And then here we'll say decoder add. We'll add in dense. And here we're going to expand it back out to the final 17 neurons. Same as before, activation function equal to rectified linear unit. And then what we'll do here is 
complete that decoder. Then after that, what we're going to be doing is we'll simply say, create the autoencoder combination, which is auto encoder is equal to sequential and then encoder with decoder. Then beyond that, we'll say auto encoder and we'll compile it. The loss here, because it's continuous value, should be mean squared error. And let's go ahead and say our optimizer is equal to stochastic gradient descent. And we'll start off with a learning rate of 1.5. Go ahead and have that. Then we'll create our minimax scaler to scale the data. And what we're going to do is make sure we transpose the data, since really what we have here are 14 feature columns and only four rows, so one per country. So to do this, we'll say from sklearn dot preprocessing, go ahead and import min max scalar, create an instance of our scalar. We'll say scalar is equal to min max scalar, create the scaled version of our data frame. So say scaled df is equal to scalar. And we'll simply just fit transform on everything. So fit transform, except for call here, we'll say fit transform on transpose. And to make sure it's a numpy array, we'll say values after that. So then note here the shape of our scaled DF. If we ask for the shape here, it's four rows by 17 features. Now it's time to fit the autoencoder to the scale data for 15 epochs. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll say autoencoder fit scaled df scale df epochs go ahead and run it for 15 run that should be very fast because it's an extremely small data set and then next we'll run the scale data through only the encoder and predict the reduced dimensionality output so in that case just as we did in the very first couple of lectures we said encoded two dimensional version is equal to encoder dot predict scaled data frame. So after running that encoded two dimensionality, you should get probably something that looks like this. Um, depending on how many epochs you ran for and your particular random initializations, you may actually see an entire column be zeros. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and now join the encoded two dimensional data with the original country's index. So one way we can do that is by simply saying the following. Recall that if I say df transpose dot index. It's the same as grabbing the actual columns. So we have England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. So I'll say my final results are equal to PD data frame, where my data is the encoded two-dimensional version. My index is equal to DF transpose dot index. And then finally, let's say my columns are C1 and C2. So two subcomponents that are from the very middle hidden layer. So C1 and C2, those are just generic names I chose. Okay, so if I take a look at my results, I have this data frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say results is equal to results reset index in order to have something that looks like this, which means I can actually now plot C1 versus C2 and then labeled by index with a scatter plot. So I can do that with Seaborn. So say Seaborn scatter plot x equal to C1, y equal to C2. So that's the reduced dimensionality. We'll say data is equal to results. And let's say hue is equal to index. Run that. And here we can see that Northern Ireland, very different from England, Wales, and Scotland. And we can see Wales is also quite different from England and Scotland. So you should have gotten something that's pretty similar behavior, essentially showing you that Northern Ireland quite different from the other three. And if you got differentiation between the remaining three as well, that's okay as well. What you should have noticed is the two most similar ones on your plot should hopefully have been England and Scotland. So the two closest points on your plot should be England and Scotland. And then the furthest away from that, from the other three should be Northern Ireland. Depending on your autoencoder, Wales might have been differentiated further or closer to England and Scotland. Okay, so keep in mind, once you actually go back and look at the data in the table, it makes sense. So if you go back and look at the data in the table, you'll notice that the Northern Irish actually eat way more grams of fresh potatoes and far fewer grams of things like fresh fruits, 
cheese, fish, and alcoholic drinks. So things that are actually difficult to interpret just by looking at the raw data. So it's a good sign that the structure we visualize actually reflects a big fact in real world geography. Since Northern Ireland is the only of those four countries that's not on the actual island of Great Britain. Okay, and we have a little link to this video in case you're confused over the differences between England, UK, and Great Britain. All right, so that's it for this exercise. I hope you enjoyed it as a practical application for dimensionality reduction with autoencoders. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next lecture.